Hey guys, it's Andrew here. Um, I've been asked to explain to you more why BIM and a little bit about BIM so that you can understand why you would use it, utilize it in residential construction. And as you can see over here, there is a, a 3D model. Now, there are so many, I guess, misconceptions about BIM. And look, at the end of the day in residential construction, what is it about a 3D model that actually enables us to build more efficiently uh, and to understand the process. I think that the main thing we can get out of a 3D model is communication. And it could be visual communication for the client so that they can see the facade of the project from the outside in. And we can look at things like shadow uh, and light according to the way that the project sits on the block. Uh, and that can all be achieved from a 3D model. Not necessarily a BIM, although it is information associated with the project and shadow is according to date and time. So therefore, technically it is BIM. However, there's also more information uh, that is associated with the 3D model than just communication. And that information could be, you know, uh, as far as the site survey, how does it work in conjunction with the proposed project? So as you can see, we have a sloping block here and, and in some cases it's more feasible to build up on uh, timbers, uh, which we would generally call bearers and joist. And there are other things about a model that can be utilized not only to help us make sure that the, the light comes in the window at the right time, but also to help us uh, explain to subcontractors on site. So for instance, if I went to say a site plan, Subcontractors would need to know, so the concreter would need to know before he poured the concrete where all of the locations for the drainage would have to go through the concrete. And that's information that we can either plot on a, on a plan or in a 2D model or in a 3D model. And as you can see, we're looking at this in three dimensions. We can also look at the structure. You know, how will we go about building this project before all of the external finishes uh, go on? And how would the air conditioning interact with the members required to hold up the roof? All of this information can be put into a BIM model, but it's actually virtual design and construction. And Plus Design Build actually creates this geometry for you. So as opposed to SketchUp where you would actually use, say, a rectangle tool and you might uh, offset a rectangle and push-pull the rectangle, to symbolize walls, technically there isn't anything behind them. So if we went to say all here and we looked at the model and we ran a section through it, so we're going to cut through the center of it, or say we cut through it here, there's no information inside of the models which is a visual representation of what's actually going on. And plus spec and plus design build will actually associate that information according to uh, the construction type that you've drawn. So if I actually turn those sections off, we can have a look inside of that wall there and you'll notice that it's hollow. However, if we looked inside of a plus design build or a plus spec wall, you'll notice it actually has framing and everything required to build it. So if we looked at our structure, you can see that there's framing there uh, behind it. So the difference between just drawing in SketchUp and drawing in plus design build is that when we actually chose to draw a wall, a wall. We can choose the type of wall uh, and that's notated by the symbols down here and it could be double masonry so therefore we would have two layers of bricks or it could be a veneer or it could be just a lightweight wall which will be say cladding on the outside and when we choose that wall and we draw around say some SketchUp geometry, I'll just draw two here, right? We had the ability to give it a height, uh, which is here, and we also had the ability to give it a header height. So this would be the top of the window. So if I went back to all, we actually have a clad wall, and if I ran a section through those clad walls, back to here again, okay, and we move that section, you'll notice that it's showing the frames inside of it versus the SketchUp model 
which is just hollow. And you might find that other programs like Revit and Archicad would also do the same thing and hollow model. They're not virtual design and construction models uh, and kind of only do half the job when it comes to BIM. So not only do we have visual information inside of the model, for instance studs or whatever is required to build that construction type, we also have information that we can utilize to help with feasibility studies or also quoting. So if I went say take off the selection and we did a take off just of that one wall, there's so much information inside of it. So we have pest control, we have framing, we have insulation and we have cladding. So when it comes to cladding, if you we went to here, you'll notice we have the size of the cladding there, how many square meters were required and how many actual boards we would need to purchase. And this is the information associated with the model. So building information modeling uh, can take on many aspects according to what it is that we want to take from the drawing. And with every project, if it's not feasible guys uh, and the client can't afford it, well, there isn't as much point in designing it so with this particular process and plus design build, you can design the project up, have an understanding of price, and therefore ensure it's feasible before we get into construction documentation and actually starting to create a set of plans for, um, for development application or building application or approval. And from these plans, now I'll just go back here and just explain a little bit more. I'll just delete these walls that I drew there and all of this. Okay. We can also create the documentation required for a development application or a building approval. And what we have is a, a scene tool. And when we click this, essentially it's going to create these things at the top called scenes, which will now show me elevations and whether we wanted to look at them in the traditional sense, which would be black and white, or whether we wanted to look at them in color, um, would depend on how we want to present that drawing to authorities. Now these drawings can also be output into a 2D drawing template and essentially if we we're going to create a set of BA or DA plans we could actually click a button up here and we could choose the paper size we want to choose and we could also um, choose the layout of the project and what we wanted to have on each piece of paper. That would be design documentation. So a building information model or a virtual design and construction model like we're looking at here can create multiple things. Number one, a price for feasibility study. Uh, we could create things called purchase orders, which we would then send to say Bunnings to buy the timber, or we might send it to the concreter to supply and install the concrete. But we could also utilize the 3D model to actually create drawings for council uh, approval. And we could also create drawings for contractor communication on site, just as we did with this layout plan here. And all of this can be done inside of SketchUp with Plus Design Build. And I think the benefit for students is that you don't actually have to know how to build, you just have to know what you're going to build and it will actually automate a lot of the um, requirements to make it so that you can figure out if it's feasible for the client uh, if it will work with the council requirements and if it will be buildable by the subcontractors. So I hope that has helped you understand a little bit more about building information modeling and virtual design and construction and why you'd use Plus Design Build to actually uh, procure a project from concept all the way through to completion. Hope it helps guys. Cheers.